Hey YouTube, it's Jared with One Earth Mushrooms. I've been doing a lot of reading and research lately on monotubs, and I really wanted to share with you some of the stuff that I've learned. Monotubs are pretty amazing. They're able to balance the competing factors of heat, humidity, fresh air exchange, and carbon dioxide all in one convenient tub. These tubs are easy to build and easy to operate. I stole a few pencils from my kid's art room and tried my hand at some art. I'll be using a red pencil to indicate heat, a gray pencil to indicate CO2, and a blue pencil to indicate cool, fresh air. Our monotub starts with pre-cut holes that are covered with non-breathable tape and a mixture of substrate and grain spawn in the bottom of the tub. Mycelium begin to colonize the substrate. This action, combined with decomposition of the substrate, generates heat and carbon dioxide. Hot air rises to the top of the monotub and carbon dioxide, because it's heavier than air, accumulates at the bottom. Eventually, the monotub is a mixture of hot air and carbon dioxide, and mycelium growth continues until the substrate is fully colonized. At this point, the conditions are perfect for hyphal knot formation and eventual primordia growth. Primordia growth is often referred to as pinset. It's going to appear as small, darker spots on the surface of the substrate. This is when we know that it's the right time to introduce cool, fresh air and get the hot air and carbon dioxide out of our monotub. Now, our monotub already has holes pre-drilled in it. I'm just drawing them in now to indicate that we've opened up holes through the monotub. A monotub typically has holes near the surface of the substrate to draw fresh air in and holes near the top to allow hot air and gases to escape. We cover the holes in our monotub with a breathable tape or with polyfill and this maintains humidity inside the monotub while allowing for fresh air exchange and gas exchange. Because hot air rises, the hot air will escape out the top holes. This is going to cause cool air to be drawn in through the bottom holes. That cool air drawn in will mix with carbon dioxide and also escape out the top. We now have some very small current of air flowing through our monotub, which is helping the carbon dioxide to escape and removing heat from the monotub. These are the prime conditions that we need to establish fruiting. Our pins begin to turn into mushrooms at this point, and eventually we should see mushrooms forming all over the surface of our substrate. Now, I just want to review the steps that occur in a monotub. We start with substrate and grain spawn. Heat and carbon dioxide are generated. The heat rises, carbon dioxide falls to the bottom, and the concentration of carbon dioxide rises inside the monotub. Our substrate becomes fully colonized, and then hyphal knots begin to form. The hyphal knots morph into primordia, also known as pins. Fresh air is then introduced, which causes our temperature to go down and our carbon dioxide concentration to go down. Our substrate being fully colonized, a drop in temperature and a drop in carbon dioxide, along with an increase in fresh air, are the prime conditions for fruiting. At this point, the primordia begin to morph into mushrooms, and we have ourselves success. I hope this was informative, and I hope we learned something together. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I'll be releasing new videos every three days, and there's plenty more to come. Thanks.